it's human nature to want what you don't or can't have. And that is so applicable to how Mattel released the original 36 Piston Cup racers from 2006 to 2010. Now, let me explain. This might sound ridiculous, but Johnny Blamer here, the four-wheel drive racer, is what I like to call, he's a part of the trinity of Piston Cup racers. That includes four-wheel drive, gaskets, and taco mint. All three of those guys were not released until the very last minute in the final wave of Kmart rubber tire releases. Now, Johnny and Sage, Sage is the gaskets racer, were both a part of European promo offers. And over here in America, you know, we're like, what? Like back in 2008, 2009, when those promos were going on, none of us could get them. And I mean, some people did, but they were extremely difficult to get. They were only available pretty much then in the Motor Speedway of the South set, which you guys know was very expensive and at that point already extremely rare. So they were impossible to get. And so naturally as a kid, you know, I'm like nine years old during this time, my favorite piston cut racers became the last ones released. Like my favorites, Taco Mint, you know, top five, Sage Vanderspin for gaskets. This guy's in my top 10 as well. It's just kind of funny how that works out. And, you know, surprisingly, even though he is one of my favorites, and I feel like a lot of people like him, he's become very, very forlorn. So welcome guys to chapter 10 of season two of Forlorn Favorites. This is chapter 24 overall. And I know I mentioned in episode one of Krusty Roder that, you know, I wanted to review this guy, but maybe season three. And I was like, nah, we're doing him now because he has a full right to be in this season, the second season, because he's only been released pretty much three times. You have the Motor Speedway of the Salsa in 2008. You have the promo, which I don't count. It was a European Toys R Us type promo. Then you have the single Kmart rubber tire release. And by luck, he was also in a Kmart three pack with gaskets and Lightning McQueen. And then in 2017, in the very first case of singles, they released him as a plastic tire single. Great looking art by the way like they changed the art actually from 2010 but that was it like he's not been released since then and i think he is extremely underrated he's a beautiful car so much color so much design that we're going to get into there he is in the movie in the original dynaco 400 motor speedway of the south race let me know your guys' thoughts on you know all of what i said like is he one of your favorites do you think he's forlorn i mean just by you know, fact, he is one of the least released Piston Cup racers. In fact, I think he may be the least released. That's kind of a mouthful. But let's get into it here. This is the rubber tire version, by the way. I guess we could start with showing the base, Disney Pixar China, date stamp there, and that was it. You know, Back in the day, they didn't put much on the base, but you can see they have these slick rubber tires they're very hard, they're not like very rubber at all, but technically they are rubber. He's got gray rims or wheels. He's got, you know, the typical expression that all racers with this model had. No grill, which is kind of notable. 54 there on the headlight. I just love this blue green two-tone thing that's going on. They kind of battle back and forth the entire body here. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. But on the hood here, you have this dirt patch with tire tracks across it. And then in like a rough font, full wheel drive, dirt decals for urban SUVs, just like off-road. Love the slogan. Again, they kind of botch the slogan once they get to Cars 3, but that's what I appreciate about the Cars 1 racers. So you can see all of his contingency sponsors are there. Piston Cut, Mood Springs, Gaskets, Gasprin are among them. Love the 54, love how the black drop shadow just looks really nice on this whole sky horizon. So you got, you know, it starts even over here by the fender. So a little dirt, some of the trees, and obviously, just to throw out the idea, these are dirt decals. Faux means fake. So, you know, it's basically to make yourself look tough. <laughs> As if you're going off-road, but you're really not. 
But yeah, you can see like all the trees in the wilderness. This looks like it's from like Colorado or Alaska. Some mud down here. They did a nice job making it look real. And I guess that's good. Like if the piston cut racer sponsored by the company looks like it's actually dirty, then you know, I guess the decals are pretty good. Right there, some upsplash for urban SUVs. So yeah, you know, SUVs that live in the city that don't have a chance to get out and mess around in the mud. They can get a taste of it with decals. There's the logo again, dirt decals. A little bit more of the wilderness over here. Kind of like a snowy mountain here. And then you got the sky. I love that, that this whole blue part is actually the sky. Also love the dirt decals on the top here. The tread marks, 54 again. Green window bars. Faux wheel drive. Just like off-road. And you got some of the white back here. Again, this is like the snow mountain top. Love how they, you know, all the colors have a purpose. Such a cool car, really. He's so underrated. And what's funny is that the car's three four-wheel drive racer, Tommy Highbanks, although he was one of the first stock cars to be released for Cars 3, he again is one of the least released cars he was in. That single in 2017, then a online multi-pack, and then a big Target 11 pack last year from Vietnam. So yeah, really, four wheel drive just is kind of getting, they're getting the short end of the stick from Mattel. Now, Herb Kerbler is a slightly different story. He's been released a couple times. Again, initially in 2017 with this cool collector card. And then after that, he received a two pack release. And I think he was also in maybe a multi-pack as well. But actually, you know, overall, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this. Out of all the racers that appeared in both movies, so Combustor, Triple Dent, Retread, Cyborg Shine, those don't count. But for the racers, the sponsors that appeared in both movies, I believe Phobial Drive has the least combined releases out of all of them. If you like take all three racers. You know, I, I bet on that, but somebody please find that out because I'll probably find it out myself. I'm probably going to make a project out of that. Like, for example, you know, I take a look at Tanko, Eugene Karbreski, Reb Meeker, then Rich Mixon. I mean, that's already more for sure. Reb Meeker was released multiple times. Eugene, quite a few. Rich Mixon, quite a few. But these guys really, my goodness. Also, not to mention they have no team to speak of and... Me, who has a ton of customs, I only have this custom hauler, which is, you know, fantastic. It's like the best hauler Jim Scavenger ever made that I actually haven't reviewed yet, but I will. Don't worry. Beautiful hauler here from Jim. And yeah, that will conclude today's video. Also, I wanted to say that Four Wheel Drive is probably the least changed sponsor in terms of marketing and branding. You know, always had that blue, green, and like brown and the tire tracks like that that is on all three of these racers never changes i mean these guys are very identical the wilderness looks a little bit more realistic on tommy highbanks and i'll leave my links to you know herb and tommy in the description and all that but it's funny how similar all these are i mean the font for 54 and four wheel drive is the same so very cool stuff Super underrated sponsor, in my opinion. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching this chapter of Forlorn Favorites. I'll see you next Friday for another one. Bye now.